God wants me to dream big. God wants me to dream big. He wants me to use the imagination that he gave me. Because dreaming big honors God. It shows faith, it shows trust. Now you should base your dream not on what you think you could do, but you should base your dream on what you think God could do. Let the size of my God determine the size of my goal. God's dream for my life is bigger than my dream. Listen, if the dream doesn't scare you today, it's probably not from God. But if the dream does scare you, it is from God. God's got a dream and it's so big, it's so awesome. We know it can't happen in our own strength, in our own power, in our own resource. We've got to depend on God and we've got to get ready for what's about to happen. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. He said, imagination rules the world. So I, I dare you to dream great dreams. We live in a world that has been shaped by the dreams of people. The Wright brothers dreamed of flight and we have aviation today. Alexander Graham Bale dreamed of communication. We have the telephone, now the iPhones, the cell phones. There have been dreamers like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates who dreamed and shaped and formed the world that we live in very much by the dream that they had deep in their heart. You know, I, I really have decided, I, I've read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of biographies of great people. And I really just come to the conclusion, there aren't any great people. There are only great dreams. But when an ordinary person goes after a great dream, she or he becomes a great person. We're all born the same way, knowing nothing. We all start at the same level. And I just have concluded that we're all just ordinary people. But some ordinary people attach themselves to an extraordinary dream. And in attaching yourself to an extraordinary dream, you become an extraordinary person. You have no idea what God could do in your life. You believe God for great things, God will do great things in your life. You believe God for big dreams, God will do big dreams in your life. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. And it doesn't require any faith. The Bible says, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. You get to decide what God does in your life. A dream stretches my faith. It forces me to trust God. It's not too late. It's never too late to start dreaming. Never too late. A dream is a, is a God-given projected destiny. It means you see it out there or something that God shows you that he says, this is, this is who I, I see in you. And that's called a dream. It's a designated end. It's a vision of, of where I shall be when God places his hand upon my life. And there's no question that God has a dream for every person. But with that dream always comes, with God's dream, there always comes hell's nightmare to try to steal that dream. And if you don't learn to endure the nightmare, you will never experience the dream. So many people give up and quit because they have a dream planted by God in their heart, but then comes the nightmare. The moment that most people give up is the moment of the greatest opportunity. Everything you want is on the other side of not giving up. The nightmare is the enemy trying to steal that dream and get you to give up. The question is, can God trust you with trouble? Your trouble is your pathway to triumph. Your pain is your pathway to a higher praise. Your mess is a pathway to the miraculous things of God in your life. The dream is your destiny. The dream tells you where you're going. Your adversity will advance you. The nightmare is the dream stealer. 
The nightmare says just give up. You know, somebody said many years ago, anything worth doing is worth doing well. But here's a new one for you. Anything worth doing is worth failing at. And that's why you have to endure the nightmare. Because if you want to give yourself to something, give yourself to something that's worth failing over. You're not a failure because you fail. You're a failure because you quit. And don't you let other people's opinion become your reality. Saul had an opinion. He said, David, you can't defeat Goliath with that slingshot and that stone. You need this armor and you need to do this and you need to do that. But David said, I'm not going to let your opinion, Saul, become my reality. I'm going to do what God has told me to do. So many times people give up and they quit right on the verge. I'm telling you today that it's time to pick up the drop dreams. God has an amazing dream or plan for your life. God speaks to us in many ways, doesn't he? Sometimes we can have like a, a vision in the day. Maybe as you're reading your Bible or you're listening to a message or you're in worship, and God speaks to you, and you know that. God is calling you to something. So it's not very rarely. I've never had an audible voice, but I very often know those promptings of the Spirit preparing me for what is to come. And the key thing is that we learn to listen to God because there's something about receiving God's plan, God's dream, that it causes our faith to come alive. And it helps us keep going when the times get tough. And sometimes God reminds us of dreams that he's given us in the past. Sometimes he enlarges and expands the vision that we have. It's one thing to dream the dream. We need to dream the dream. But how many know it's another whole deal to actually live the dream? The world isn't changed just through dreamers. It's through people who press through, stay the course, I don't know about you, but when God speaks to me about the future, there's something in me that wants it to happen right now. But normally in the timing of God, there's a time lag between vision conception and sometimes it can be days, months, even years before the vision is finally fulfilled. And then we need to ask, that. so why the, why the delay? It's not that God is deliberately holding things back because he's me. No, God's a good God. He's a loving Father. He wants the best. But he often knows that we're not ready to live the dream when he gives us the dream. Preparation is something that we should rejoice in and embrace but if you're in the preparation season, can I say in Jesus' name, don't quit. Don't take shortcuts. Don't compromise. Pass the tests. And then the glorious promise is, in God's timing, promotion will come. Make a decision. You're going to do the best for God right where you are now. And it may be a confined place. You may feel confined in a home setting. You may feel confined in a, in a job or career. You may feel confined in the church and you say, this is not the ultimate that God has for you. No, but if you're faithful and you're fruitful where you are right now, God can and will give you more in Jesus' name. And never despise the, de the day of small things because what you learn in the little is the same for believing for big. How many of you have a dream or a goal or something that you believe is God's will for you, but nothing's happening? You know, God is not going to unleash you on the world until you learn how to handle the little bit. Be faithful in a little bit, and then God will give you more. 
You see, a dream, when you get it, will encourage you. There's something about a dream that brings encouragement and joy to people's lives. It gives you excitement. It encourages you. The people who are depressed, the people who are discouraged are the people who don't have a dream. Because when you have a dream, it makes you get up in the morning. It makes you put your clothes on and go to work because you've got a dream. And a dream has the power to encourage you. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have something to stimulate your brain, if you don't have something that keeps you sharp and focused, if you don't have challenges, you won't stay alive. You, you, you could drop into a pile of dust pretty quick if you don't have any. I don't care how old you are. I don't care who you are. You need a dream. Dreams motivate us. They energize us. They fire us up. God is a God who wants to give you a dream that drives you. Dream problems are the best problems. Listen, in life, you're going to have problems. And if you don't do nothing, you're going to have problems. But if you've got a dream, you're going to have problems. I'd rather create my problems and move toward my dream and have to deal with problems that are getting me to my dream than do nothing. So either way, you're going to have problems. Dream problems are the best problems. So get a dream. Excuses are the crutches of the uncommitted. There's always a reason to quit. There's going to be times when your circumstances are inconsistent with your dreams. And in those moments, you have two choices. Number one, you can reduce your life to your present circumstances. Give up on it. Settle. Or you can believe through God your life will catch up with your dream if you won't quit and won't give up. Never allow circumstances to change the dream God has put in your heart. Never, never allow circumstances to change the dream God has put in your heart. There are two reasons why dreams break down. Number one, people quit believing in God. Number two, people quit believing in themselves. Now, I know people who believe in God, but they don't believe in themselves. And I know people who believe in themselves, but they don't believe in God. And it's got to come together. You've got to believe in God and you've got to believe in yourself if you're going to fulfill the dream God has called you to do. Make your life count. Make it worth it. Do something with your life that is significant. Never let an impossible situation intimidate you. Let it motivate you to pray more, believe more, trust more, experience more, learn more, and grow more. Faith always works in the realm of the impossible. Dream big. Let the size of your God determine the size of your goal. You haven't really believed God until you've attempted something that can't be done in the power of the flesh. God's dream for your life can only be accomplished, as Ephesians 3.20 says, by His mighty power at work within you. If you can do it in your own strength, then it's not a God-sized dream. But the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Maybe you've thought, well, I could try again, but I'll fail again. I don't have what it takes. I'm not qualified to do this. That's why it is imperative that we diligently seek God because God does not always call the equipped. Hear me out, this is so important, but he always equips those that he calls. When we realize that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, that is when our life begins to change. You know, there are a lot of dreams. You could have big dreams and they wouldn't be significant. You could dream of being a millionaire by a certain age or dream of being a billionaire. For what purpose? Just, do you think God put you on this planet to live for yourself? Of course not. You have no idea what God wants to do in your life. You are living such a small fraction of what you're capable of. You are doing with your life such a small portion of what God wants to do in your life. God's dream for your life is enormous. It's big. He says, I can do more than you can imagine or guess or request in your wildest dream. The Bible says he does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. Now, doubt and fear neutralize what God wants to do in your life. You see, it takes courage to imagine. Why? You know why most people don't imagine? Because they're afraid of failure. 
When you were a kid, you had a great imagination. Children have a massive amount of imagination. But the older you get, the more your imagination grows rusty. And you stop imagining what things could be and you just start living the way they are. Doubt is the enemy of imagination. And that's why it takes courage. And by the way, what is courage? Courage is doing the thing you fear the most. If you're not afraid, you don't need courage. You don't need courage. Courage only happens when you're scared to death. Courage is when you're scared to death, you say, I'm gonna do it anyway. You gotta believe and you gotta banish doubt. You know what you need to do? You need to doubt your doubts and believe your beliefs. The problem we have today is we do the exact opposite. We believe our doubts and we doubt our beliefs. No, no, doubts are meant to be doubted, beliefs are meant to be believed. So you believe your beliefs and you doubt your doubts. Your imagination in your life is either going to be governed by fear or it's going to be governed by faith. And that's your choice. And instead, if you say, I'm not going to allow fear to dominate me, I'm going to allow faith to dominate me. And I'm going to trust in God. All things are possible with God. Then your imagination talks about what could happen, the good things that might happen. And your imagination moves you ahead. And the most important thing to remember is this. Jesus said, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. But I wanna tell you there's always a gap between when you see the dream in your heart to when you see the dream in reality. And in between you seeing the dream or the vision, God loves to test us along the way to see if we can ultimately end up handling the weight and the magnitude and the influence, the impact that his dream has. See, a lot of us, we wanna get a dream on Sunday and have it come to pass on Monday. But God, he has this way of preparing us for the ultimate plan that he has for our life. Remember, you have to become who you're supposed to become so you can do what you're supposed to do. God says, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. When God gives you a dream, then he circumstantially provides the open doors for you to make that dream come true. Now here's the hard part. You have to have the courage to walk through that open door. That's where faith comes in. I've seen a lot of people understand God's dream for their life. And I've seen God open circumstances and open doors this wide, but they were scared to death to walk through the door. And if, if, if you're faithful in what he gives you in small things, he gives you more. And he expands your dream and he gets it bigger and he gets it better and he gets it wider and it has more impact because you were faithful in the other. Everybody's creative. Just look at the little kid. Every little kid is creative. And by the time they get sixth grade, we've educated them out of it. And now they're drawing in the lines. And now they've conformed to what we think they ought to be doing. God gave you the capacity to dream. Guess what? He expects you to use it. Now when God gives you a dream, it's not like the plan is all laid out and you can see it from beginning to end. Because if you could see the end of the dream of God, God's dream for your life, it'd scare you to death. What it is, it's kind of like a scroll where you roll down a little bit and you read that part of the dream and you do that. Then you roll it down a little bit more and you do that. Then you roll it down a little bit more and you do that. And eventually you get to the end. But he's not gonna give you the whole picture up front. It'll scare you to death. But what I want you to do is just get a peek, a peek of what God wants to do in your life. It is in having a dream you keep growing. A dream forces you to develop skills that you don't have. I have had to be on a learning curve my entire life. You don't even know what you're good at until the dream pulls it out of you. And then you go, oh, I didn't know I had that skill. I didn't know I had that spiritual gift. I didn't know I had that ability. I didn't know I was shaped for that. It is only in the dream that it pulls you out of yourself, forces you to be bigger than yourself, to grow beyond yourself, so you're not selfish anymore. Without a dream, I'm dying. Without a dream, I'm dying. You're either dreaming or you're dying. Some of you start dying a long time ago. 
because you stopped dreaming.